community classroom uh, here with Tamara Kelly of Moogly Blog. Um, we're so excited to be back in the Michaels community classroom today. I know we've been having a lot of fun this summer. Um, today we are in Crochet 102, so part two of our Crochet for Beginners series. Um, again, here with Tamara Kelly of Moogly Blog. So excited to be back with you. Um, <laughs> Let us know where you're coming in from in the chat. Uh, we're so excited to have you all, and we'll give you another few minutes to kind of get all settled and ready here. But um, again, um, I'm Allie. If you haven't been to a class before, so if you have any questions throughout, feel free to ask me in the chat, and I will make sure that Tamara gets them. Um, and today we are teaching the scalloped crochet dishcloth. So I know we worked on the body of the cloth during our Crochet 101 class, and we're so excited to be back. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> yes, and uh, so if we signed up for this class, if you took 101 or if you're just taking 102, um, you'll want to re-download the pattern if you haven't already. And I know Allie said she was going to be putting that link in the chat as well. Um, there was a small error I discovered on the border, but it's all fixed now. So you'll want to go ahead and make sure you have the latest copy of this pattern download. Um, of course, this is being recorded, so you can go back and watch it and follow it along later. We've only got an hour, so I've got a few things to get through. So like I said, feel free to go back and watch the recording if some part of it goes a little bit quick for you. So hi, everybody. Thank you again so much for tuning in. As Ali was saying, this, I'm Tamara from MoogleyBlog.com. And I want to thank Michaels for having me back for this class again today. So let's go ahead and bring it on down to the table here and we'll talk about what we're making today. All right, so here again, you can see the finished washcloth. And I just want to point out, if this is your first time making a crochet project, when you look at the pattern, we talked about this a little bit last time, it'll list particular colors. You'll notice my colors here are different than the colors in the written pattern. So you can use whatever colors you like. Lily Sugar and Cream is the yarn we're using today, and it comes in a whole bunch of colors, more than I could even name off the top of my head. I think probably close to 50 different colors, um, stripes, ombre, solids, whatever you want to use for this pattern is totally fine. You don't have to use the same colors I'm using. In fact, you'll see me use several different colors here today. So if we look at the written pattern again here, this is what we've been following along with, and I'm just kind of trying to go over it a little bit here with you so you get an idea of how to read these. But of course, I'll be demonstrating each part of it as well. So what we did last time was we started here at the instructions and with our first color, which is sometimes abbreviated, abbreviated rather, MC for main color, we made the center square portion of our washcloth. You can see that here in the picture, that's that center square. Here, it's the dark green square. And that's what we were doing last time. So I've got a swatch today. I'm gonna to go ahead and finish up the last row with you. Basically, it's a simple repeat. We just repeat the same row over and over again until it's about seven inches long. Now, if you are following along with the written pattern at home, uh, or if you took the last class, you'll notice it says to end on a WS row. That stands for wrong side row. Now, that said, this is a washcloth. This isn't a sweater where it's necessarily going to have to have a right or wrong side. And I tried it out both, way, both ways, rather, and I don't want you to worry about that too much right now. Right side and wrong side is something you can uh, learn later. And as a beginner for this project, it really actually doesn't really matter. So if you're looking for this pattern still, again, uh, the link should be in the chat, hopefully. They'll be putting it up a couple times. And also you should have been sent the link when you signed up for the class. So like I said, today we're gonna to go ahead and finish up just one more row of the center there so we can go over what we learned last time. And then we're going to start the edging, which is here on this one, you can see the lighter green. And we do it, we go in rounds. Before we're working back and forth in rows. So this time we're going to be going in a round, two of them all the way around our washcloth. And that's what'll give us this really beautiful border. So if I go ahead and set aside a couple of things here and bring up the swatch. This is the washcloth we were working on last time. You can see again, we're just making the center square here. And I've got one more row to go. If you do want to think about right side and wrong side for this one, a little tip for this, since we started with the chain that we worked into, the little end here, when we come back the other way, 
our end when we break it will be in this corner. So our ends that we cut will be in opposite corners. But like I said, for this project, it really doesn't matter. So I don't want you to stress too much about it. Now I have here in the corner what's called a stitch marker. And these are really handy tools you can pick up right at Michael's um, or online. They, um, this particular one happens to be by Clover, but they come in lots of different brands and styles. And these are really handy because with crochet, you have um, just that one loop you're working with, but these are handy for if you need to set down your project and walk away, you can put it in that loop so that your stitches can't come undone. And it's also really helpful for marking different stitches uh, as little clues to yourself, little signposts of stop here or start here or look for this. So if you, as you continue to learn to crochet, these are a really handy extra tool that you may want to go ahead and add to your toolbox. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and just make the last row of the center together here so we can go back over some of those basic stitches that we did learn last time. So remember to start our row two repeat, which is how we've made the entire center of this dishcloth, we're gonna start with a chain one. So we yarn over our hook from front to back and pull that right through that loop. That's our chain one. And that is the turning chain. This is the chain that acts as a little ladder lifting us up so that we can make this next row and we are at the right height to begin it. So we've got our chain one and we're going to turn our work over because we're still working in rows right now to make our last row. So we can work back right along that last row. So to begin, we're going to go into that very first stitch right there with our hook. We've got our hook under both of those top two loops. Let me hold it up a little closer here so hopefully we can see a little better. Yarn over, pull that loop up and through. Now we've got two loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through those two loops. That was a single crochet. Then we yarn over, go into that next stitch. Again, we wanna go under both of those two loops right there on top. Yarn over, pull that loop through. Yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And that is a double crochet. And those are the stitches we make, uh, those are the only two stitches really we use to make the center of the washcloth. So let's go ahead and do those together again here. We're going to single crochet in the next stitch. So we just go right on in there without yarning over first. Then we yarn over and pull that loop through and yarn over and pull through both of those loops. So then the double crochet, we yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, whoops, there we go, and pull through two. I glanced up at the screen and missed my yarn. There we are. So we're just continuing all the way across with this. Now, if you don't know how to begin this piece, again, I would urge you after this class to go back and watch the uh, Crochet 101 class. In that class, I teach you about chaining and how to begin this center of the washcloth here, and this is 102. So for this pattern, or excuse me, for this class, hopefully at this point, you have your center already done, but I wanted to give a review of the stitches that we did learn in 101. So Allie, while I go ahead and finish up my last row here, are there any other questions that I, I've been kind of trying to watch the chat, but I also try to keep my own words straight here, so sometimes I miss them. Allie? I don't see any questions um, right at the moment, but okay. I am just letting, um, I've dropped the link in the chat here um, and I'll drop it in again. But it also, if you go to um, michaels.com slash classes and go to view all classes, that's where you can find our previous recordings. But I will also drop the link in here for the original 101 class. Um, and we did also want to know, I, I think some of you have been having some trouble getting the pattern downloaded from in our chat. So if you are having trouble with that, um, there is a message here. So if you email communityclassroom at michaels.com, or if you have an email from communityclassroom at michaels.com, it often will go to your junk or spam folder. Um, so that's where you will get the pattern. Um, so we definitely recommend checking out your junk or spam folder because um, that's where the pattern will come from. And if you continue having trouble getting the pattern in chat, um, feel free to just send me a private message of your email address and we can get it resent to you and um, in the chat here. 
<laughs> okay, great. All right, so hopefully, like I say, hopefully you've worked all the way across here. You've got your square, or at least roughly square. Um, in the pattern, it says the center square should be about seven inches square. But again, don't worry too much about gauge. This is a beginner class. If you fold up one edge here and you can see these edges are the same length, it means we've got a square and we're gonna go ahead and go with it. So at this point, what you want to do is go ahead and cut the yarn. So that just literally means what it says. You're gonna go ahead and use a pair of scissors to cut the yarn. And you'll notice I didn't cut it real close here. This is really important. When you make a crochet or a knit project for that matter, uh, you're going to need to weave in these ends. And for that, you'll need a yarn needle. And we'll go over that here in a moment. But you want to make sure that you cut your yarn with at least about six inches or so left there on the tail. You don't wanna cut it up real close because that will make it really difficult to weave in that end afterwards. So after you've gone ahead and cut your yarn with your scissors, then you're just going to take your hook, yarn over again, and this is gonna be just like a chain where we pull that loop right through, but then we're gonna pull it all the way up and through just like that and give that end a little tug. And that acts as a little knot. If I hold it up a little closer here, you can see that acts as a little knot so our stitches can't come undone. And now it is nice and secure and we have our finished center washcloth here. So let me pull up a yarn needle here, which I should have in my little bowl of fun stuff. There we go, found one. All right, so this is a yarn needle. So if you haven't worked with uh, you know, yarn before, you may not have one of these. Uh, it is much like a standard needle. It's got typically a very large, longer opening like this. You can see it's a lot bigger than other needles. It's also relatively dull. I would have to push really hard to actually hurt myself with this. So this is used specifically for yarn. You don't wanna try and squeeze this end of yarn through a tiny little sewing needle. You'll want to get a yarn needle like this. So when you've cut your yarn and you're ready, before you move on to the next section, it can be a good idea to go ahead and weave in those ends. So to weave in those ends, go ahead and thread the end of the yarn on your yarn needle like so, make sure it's through a full few inches. This is why we need a few inches here to work with. And then what you need to do is just sew that end into your stitches. And this can take a little bit of practice and there's no right or wrong for which direction to go. You just want to, I'm gonna try and hold this here as close to the camera as I can. You just wanna go right through the center of some of your stitches there. So take your time and find a little path to stick your needle through. You can check the other side and make sure the whole needle isn't showing there, that it looks pretty well buried. And then just go ahead and start pulling that through, like so. So there's a little bit, but we don't wanna stop there. We want to keep going. You'll want to wander around through your stitches with your needle in a couple different directions. The more directions you go and the longer the length of the end that you weave in, then the better that end is going to stick. And in fact, I really like to recommend you come back the opposite direction at some point. Maybe grab another, grab another strand so you don't just pull your stitches out, but come back in the opposite direction a couple times. And that will really, really hold your stitches down. Now you can go ahead and weave your ends in as you go. Like after I started this, I could have gone back and woven in that first one, or you can save them all for the end. Totally personal preference. Some people love weaving in their ends, some people hate it. So it's totally up to you, however you like to do it. But I really do recommend that you weave it into your project back and forth, ideally the section that's the same color. It'll be a lot more hidden that way. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, some people will crochet over the ends a little bit and it's okay to do a couple stitches like that to secure it down, but I really feel that weaving it in with a needle is the best way to get an end that isn't going to come back and unweave or <laughs> come back out uh, of your project later. Um, so the more, uh, the more of that length you can weave in there, the better. Um, I would keep going with this one, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna say that I've woven in, you know, the majority of the length of it, and I have just a little bit there. So after you have uh, woven in enough that you feel it is secure, then at that point, you can go ahead and just carefully cut the end of that yarn close to your project, like so. Oh, there we go. So there's didn't wanna work there for a minute. There we go. So then you can just go ahead and trim it off, give that a little tug. A lot of times then that little end will disappear on into the project and that is a woven in end. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So after you've got 
all your ends woven in and or, or if you decided to go ahead and leave them for last, then it's time to go ahead and begin our edging. So Allie, did we have any questions about that that I could address before I hop to the edging? Yeah, so there were a couple people okay. who don't have a yarn needle on hand. Right. Um, okay. So they were wondering if they could, can still add the edge and then weave in their end afterwards. Absolutely. Absolutely. You'll just kind of want to push those, you know, push those little ends to the back so they're out of the way as we crochet around and then you can weave them in at the end. No problem at all. Another thing you can do, and this is a little bit harder, um, but if you don't have a yarn needle on you and you can't get one, you can use your hook a little bit to weave them in. It's a little bit easier if you use a smaller hook than the one you've been crocheting with but you can use your needle, again, let me try and pull this up a little closer to the camera here, sort of go in between those stitches down in your project a little bit, find whatever path you can, sort of push it through, and then grab that end and pull it through. It's a little bit more difficult, but in a pinch, it can get the job done. So that is another alternative as well. Awesome. And then Dee actually had a question. Um, do you weave it underneath the yarn or do you pierce through the strands of yarn as you're weaving it in? Gosh, you know, that's a great question. Um, I would say a little bit of both. Um, and sometimes it depends on the yarn. Not every yarn can be split. Um, so for instance, the chenille style yarns like Bernat Blanket, you can't really split that strand like you can with this yarn. So you'll need to look at the yarn you're using. For this yarn in particular, I always like to do a little bit of each. I will go between uh, the strands of yarn for the majority of it, but at the end then I might split the strands a little bit, especially when I come back that opposite direction. If you can split the strand that you're weaving in, specifically, say for example, it's a little bit harder to see with the same color. Let me pull up another color so it's a little easier to see. Let's see, it, say I wove in this direction with this is my little tail here, then if I can come back with my needle and go this direction with it and actually split this particular strand of yarn, that's going to be your most secure end um, of all the options. Unfortunately, it's really difficult to show because it's happening inside the project, but basically that's the idea to go back and um, here, let me pull up my yarn needle again and get this on here. So if I was weaving this in in this direction, I would want to come back this direction and then yes, as much as possible, if I can catch it inside the project, is send that strand back through ideally more than just that one little bit, but if I can catch it in a couple different places and I'm also going in between those different strands of yarn, that's going to be that most secure way of weaving it in. Um, so however you like to do it, you just want to make sure that you do enough length that it will keep up, uh, keep that end all tucked in. Let me go ahead now, I've got to cut that little bit off there before I use that skein, so it's got a knot in it now. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, are we ready to move on to the edging, do you think? Oh. Yeah, I think so. Great. I just wanted to remind everybody, if you do need Crochet 101, um, if you want to watch today's class and then go back and restart your body or need a refresher, I've dropped the link in chat here. So just a little reminder. Okay, great. All right, so we are ready to start the edging. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pull this up here and try and hold it steady with my hand a little bit. We're starting with edging round one. And this says join A. So right away, we need to know what does A mean? Well, if we come over here, here you'll remember I mentioned that MC is the abbreviation for main color. A, contrast A. That just means your second color. So if you didn't want to change colors, if you wanted to make them all out of the same color, you could just continue on with the same color or pick up whatever that second color you want to use is. Remember with crochet, the colors and choices those are just recommendations. Those are just the ones they use. You can always change the colors to whatever you like. Use one solid color, use a striping yarn, whatever you like to do. So we join A with a slip stitch to any corner. So let's go ahead and work just that part together here. What does any corner mean? This, for this pattern, I think the easiest way to do this, go ahead and find, you know, whether it's that last row you worked into or the bottom, <clears throat> but go ahead and find that very first stitch of the row. So this one right here. Go ahead and stick your hook right in that first stitch. So notice I haven't even picked up the yarn yet, but I've got my hook under that very first stitch. Now, reach over here and grab my second color of yarn. Find my end. There we are. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through with this yarn. 
So again, I wanna make sure that I leave a good six inches or so at least of this tail hanging out before I pull through. So I've got the yarn pinched up here about six inches from the end. So up here is where I'm going to grab it with my hook and just pull it right up through that stitch like so. So right now we just have that little loop of yarn pulled through that first stitch. So now what we want to do is take that longer end, the one still atta attached to our skein, yarn over just like we've been doing and pull through. Looks a lot like a chain, right? It's the same thing, a slip stitch, a chain, they really are just about the same. It's just a matter of sort of how you're using them. So we've pulled it through, it looks like a chain, but what we wanna do now is take that cut end and give it a nice little tug. That is going to shrink down that stitch. Let me try and hold it up here again. So you can see how that's really small right now. I wouldn't wanna try and stick my hook back in this one. This is just how we're attaching the yarn to our project to begin working with the second color. So after that, if you look at the written instructions, the next thing it says is chain one. It's gonna look a lot like what we just did. We just yarn over and pull that loop through. So now we've got the chain one that is our turning chain. The next instruction is three SC in same SP as SLST. And since this is a beginner class, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Right there where it says three SC in same SP as SLST. That reads as three single crochets, that's the SC, in same space, SP, as slip stitch. Again, if you get confused on the abbreviations, it is a little bit like learning a new language. Fortunately, it's mostly English, and the abbreviations for all those little codes that you'll come across are right there on top. So you can always glance up there and say, oh, SC, ah, single crochet. So three single crochets in the same space as the slip stitch. So we work that slip stitch into that first stitch right there. So that's where we're going to put our three single crochets. So you insert your hook right back into that same stitch that we did for our slip stitch, yarn over and pull your loop through, and yarn over and pull through two to finish our single crochet. So that's one. We're gonna go right back in that same space again, make another single crochet, and then one more time. So we need a total of three single crochets all in that very first stitch. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my hook out give these a little tug. I always like to give my corners a little tug. I think it makes them sit nicer. But if I hold this up, you can see how this is creating a curve. This is going to create the corner that curves around as we work all the way around this dishcloth. So after you've made those three single crochets in that corner, then we're going to work 21 single crochets evenly to the next corner. Now, if you were following the center along, you'll remember we had 22 stitches in each row. So we've put the corner in that first one and that leaves 21 stitches for us to work into. So now we simply single crochet in each of those remaining stitches across. So you just go into the very next stitch just as we've been doing before and make single crochets. We don't have to make double crochets, um, not till round two of the edging. This is just all single crochets. So we're just going to work our way all the way across this first row and then we're going to turn and work down the side. So as I do that, Allie, did we have any other questions? Did people need to see the slip stitch again? Yeah, I think it'd be great if we could show okay. the slip stitch again. No problem. And this is something I talked about too in the last one. If you, um, you know, if you lose your place or you find you made a mistake, great thing about crochet, you just pull your hook out and give it a tug and the yarn just comes right off. I love that. It's very, very beginner friendly because the, you know, any mistakes you make or anything, they just pull right on out. Okay, so once again, we want to pick up our washcloth and find the very first stitch of that last row we made. Then we go into that first stitch with our hook, right under both loops and pull it up a little closer there. All right, then we take our new color of yarn or whatever color we're using for the border and find a spot about six inches from that cut edge. And then we just lay the yarn right over our hook, like so. You can see I like to give it a little push, a little tension there with my non-hook hand. That helps me pull it through a little easier. So I've got it looped over my hook and I just pull that loop 
right on through. And then I need to find the end that is not cut, the end that's attached to our skein right there. And I yarn over with that and pull it through, just as if we were doing a chain. And now the yarn is attached to our project. So we can take that tail end and give it a little tug right there. And that will pull that slip stitch. What we just made is a slip stitch there. That'll pull that down really tight. As I said, it's a lot like a chain. It's just the differences in how you use it. There we are. We're using it right around that stitch right there. So now we've slip stitched that first stitch. Then we chain one, yarn over and pull through. And then we make three single crochets right back in that same stitch, the one we just attached to. So we just go in there and just like all the other single crochets we've been making, we just make them all right in that first stitch. And here's where I was talking about, sometimes it's easier to work over the edges, uh, the ends a little bit rather than weaving them in. And it's okay to go ahead and do that for the first couple stitches. That just means that it's a part of the stitch itself. Like when I make this single crochet, it might trap that end in there a little bit. So I would go in there and if it's over my hook, that end's gonna get trapped in my stitch. And that can be a good way to anchor them down a little bit, but you'll still wanna go back and weave in those ends when you're done. So that's two single crochets in that space and then a third one. There we go. All right. Was that, a, was that more helpful or? Awesome. We did have a question come in here. Um, if you're not changing colors, do you still have to cut your yarn? No, if, you, if you're not changing colors, um, let's go ahead and pretend. <laughs> this is actually the bottom, let's pretend it's the top. And I've worked across here and I'm at my end and I haven't cut my yarn. You can just go ahead, turn. You don't have to do your slip stitch, chain one and put those first thing, three single crochets right in that first stitch and then just continue working on across. Uh, basically the same thing, just skip the join with the slip stitch part, start with the chain one. Okay. Awesome. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and show you one other thing. Again, I don't expect you to necessarily have stitch markers, but I find them so helpful when I work in the round that I really do highly recommend you pick some up when you get a chance. I will go ahead, I'm going to put a stitch marker right under the two loops there of that very first single crochet I made. Because when you're working in the round, um, as you'll see as we get around a little bit, uh, it can get a little bit confusing to tell what is the first and last stitch of the round since they're all connected. So this can be a really handy to tool so that you always know where you've begun and where you've ended around. So like I say, after we get those three single crochets in the corner, then you just work your single crochets in each stitch across. And I did see a question pop up about how to fasten off. Um, again, let me, let's see. Basically, if you've got the active loop on your hook like that, at the end of your project, you would cut that yarn and yarn over and pull that loop on through, pull that tail on through that last loop and give it a tug and that will finish it off. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's go ahead and get that back on here. And I saw a question pop up, what are the name of those circles? And I'm afraid I, I'm not entirely sure what circles you're referring to. Uh, if you mean these little clippy guys, those are called stitch markers. So Allie, I'm, I'm afraid I, miss, I may have missed something in there and tried to answer a question that wasn't oh, quite asking. Well, if that doesn't cover your question, feel free to re-ask. I'll try and help you. As, we'll try and help you as much as possible. <laughs> I think that's what she's referring to, but I'm, I apologize. I may not have guessed the right item. So yeah, just go ahead and work your single crochets on across. So since we had 22 stitches in each of those rows of the center, if you put the three single crochets for our corner in the first one of those, that will leave you 21 stitches to work into across the top. So that's just the easiest way I have found to work this border. You just wanna go ahead and take your time and work those single crochets. I know I'm going a little quickly, but like I said, we've got a lot to cover and these are recorded so you can always go back and watch them again. So I'm just going to continue here. I am almost at the end of this first side. And again, I don't expect you to have finished your first side. Um, I just wanna make sure we do get to everything today. So once you've gotten, that first row, basically just working into the, the last row you made. So now is where it gets a little trickier. 
is called working into the edge. We are going to be working into the sides of the rows. So before, remember we were working in rows, and so we flipped our work back and forth like this, sort of like a, a, a book, book pages. That's what I'm trying to say, back and forth. For rounds, most often, they're all worked from the same side. So we're not going to flip our work over, but we're going to turn it 90 degrees, like so. So we can work along the other side. So if you're left-handed and you're going the other direction, you'll turn it this way. But if you're right-handed like me, you'll turn it this way. So basically, just follow that line on around. So here we are at the sides of our rows. This is a little bit trickier. We don't have those handy little delightful Vs to work our stitches into. So this was where it gets to be a little bit of, a little bit more of an art. There's not necessarily a right or wrong way to work into the edge. Everybody's got their preferred way. And it's also going to change a little bit just depending on the project you're making. Now remember some of these rows would have a single crochet here, some will have a double crochet here. So you're going to encounter a lot of different things. But basically you want to have a corner here at the top, again with three single crochets, and then work another 21 evenly right along here. So I have a little trick for that that also uses stitch markers, but first let's get started with our second corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find a spot where it looks like a good place to stick my hook. Let me go ahead and try and hold this up really close here, as close as I can get it and still keep it focused. I'm going to look for a couple of loops here along the edge that look like a, a likely place that my hook wants to fit through. And that looks like a good place right there. You can see I've still got, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got two loops on top of my hook there. It seems nice and secure. So let's give it a try. I will yarn over, just as I've been doing for all my other stitches, and I'm gonna go ahead and make three single crochets right into that space. Even though it's not the top of a stitch, that's one of the fun things about crochet. You can stick that hook just about anywhere you want. Might not make the stitch you're making to make, meaning to make, but you might invent something new. So here we go. We've got three single crochets. There we are. Made all right into the side of that stitch right there. And again, that was just an arbitrary place. It was close to the top. It looked like good spacing. My hook went through it beautifully. So that's where I've put my second corner. So now, because I know that that third corner is gonna be along this edge, so to speak, I've got this whole space right here to work another 21 stitches. We wanna have a corner, 21, a corner, 21, a corner, 21. Um, I apologize, you're right. This is, I saw that pop up. I'm <laughs> trying to read and talk at the same time. There, I did, uh, the second corner should have three single, five. Oh my goodness, huh, deep breath. The corner should have five single crochets in it. Thank you for pointing that out, I apologize. We've got three in this one, we're gonna add two more. When we come back around, we'll add two more to this first one to create five there. So it is important when we start the second corner and third and fourth that we make sure to get all five single crochets in there. So there's three. So no big deal, we just go back in and add two more. And if you kept going, if you already went ahead and started your 21, I already showed you, just go ahead and pull your, your hook out and you can just pull on the yarn and get right back to where you need to be. So I've added two more. So now I have five single crochets in my corner here. And again, if they look a little jumbly, you can just give them a little tug like that. It really seems to help straighten out your stitches. And then you should have that really nice curve taking you along the side here. So now we are thankfully finally ready to space out those 21 stitches. So I think the easiest way to do it rather than, you know, getting halfway across and saying, oh my gosh, I've, you know, I've got, I've got 21 and I'm only to here, or I've only made 10 and I'm all the way to here. Um, and then having to pull out and do it over and over again. This is another place where those stitch markers can come in really handy. Now, if you don't have stitch markers or you can't get to the store right away to get stitch markers, there are other things you can use. Little scraps of yarn, little short pieces of yarn can be handy. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, paper clips. Paper clips are another great solution if you don't have actual stitch markers available. So what I'm going to do is I want to break up my side here into different sections because it's a lot easier for me to say I need to work say five stitches in this little section then to try and evenly space out 21 stitches across this great big section. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm gonna do is fold my washcloth in half. And I'm gonna match up just the parts here where my 21 stitches wanna be. Okay, so if I fold that in half and then I put a stitch marker 
right at that fold, then I know I can work 10 stitches here, one stitch here, and 10 stitches here, and I'll have 21. 10 stitches uh, right here is still a lot to space out, so I can shrink that even more. I can fold where my stitch marker is to that edge again, and mark that fold. Then if I do the same thing on this edge, fold that, that edge right there to that stitch marker and mark where that fold is, right there. Again, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, we're just sticking it in there. Now I know that I need to work five stitches between here and this stitch marker, then five more stitches between that stitch marker and the next stitch marker, that'll take me to 10. Now if I put one more right where this stitch marker is, that brings me to 11. Five more here would bring me to 16, and then five more here, and I'll have my 21. So I know for me personally, it's just a lot easier to visualize spacing out those stitches if it's a short length and just a few stitches. It's a lot easier than trying to visually space out 21 as you're going. So that is my little tip there. And I did see a question, is it okay to use safety pins? Yes, safety pins are another great option. Um, the reason I like stitch markers over safety pins, you know, your standard office supply safety pins, is that they're a little duller. You can see, again, kind of like the yarn needle. It's not gonna hurt. Um, so this is really great because with uh, safety pins, you might split the yarn a little bit or snag the yarn. And of course, safety pins can rust. Um, so if your object were, your project were to get wet while the safety pin was in there, that could be an issue. Um, so this is basically, that's what crochet stitch markers are. They're basically plastic safety pins. Um, one note about this, if you haven't bought stitch markers before, make sure you get the kind for crochet. The stitch markers that are made for knit do not open, uh, typically. Of course, there's always exceptions, but typically the stitch markers for knit are circles that do not open. And um, so if you use those with crochet, you wouldn't be able to get it back out of your project as you continued working. It would be stuck in your project forever. You want to have the kinds that can open for crochet. So make sure you look for that if you do want to go ahead and pick some up. Uh, did we have any questions on those that I, other questions on that before I get started on this edging? Oh, sorry. Just bad with the mute today. Um, I don't see any other questions that have come through right now, but don't feel okay. free to um, let me know in chat if you have a question for Tamara. Oh, great. <laughs> All right. Just want to make sure that that was clear. Okay. So now I know I've got this little section right here and I've got to space out five stitches. So I'm not going to put another stitch mark in it, marker in it, but I know visually right there in the middle, that's going to be the third one. So if I just get two in here, then I can put my third one there and the next two. So same thing we did for the corner. We just want to find a spot where it looks like a good place to stick our hook for the next stitch. So right here looks like a likely spot. And I like to try and sometimes you really have to push. When you're working into the edges here, it's not always easy. It doesn't always look pretty as it's happening. But you can see when I put my hook here, <clears throat> excuse me, when I put my hook here, I only picked up one loop. That's all that's really available. That's not my favorite way to do it. So I'll give that a little tug and see if maybe there's somewhere else I can stick my hook that's a little better. Here's a nice looking hole right there. Maybe I'll try sticking my hook right there. That goes in nicely and pull it up and through. Make that single crochet. I think that looks pretty good. So like I said, this really is a little bit more of an art. Um, just kind of find the place where your hook wants to go through and where you feel like it looks good. So this is about my middle here. So let's get another one here. You can see right here, there only wants to be one loop, but if I pick up that other loop in front of it and go under both of those, that might be a good place to put the second one. You can always just sort of look at it and check and see, does that look nice? Do I like the way it looks? If I don't, go ahead and pull it out, make it again, and just go ahead and take your time working across here for these stitches. So I need to get to the middle here. So I'm gonna jump over to this one a little bit. There's my third one along the side. And then just find the spot for the next one and just continue working right down the side. Like I said, there's not really a right or wrong place to put it, it's just wherever you feel it looks good. Remember, you're making this for you or as a gift. It really is just whatever you like. If you want to use whatever colors you want, if you wanna stick those stitches wherever you want, if you don't like this scalloped border and wanted to stop with just the middle, that's fine too. 
It's whatever you are making for yourself. So you can see here, I've gotten up to my stitch marker and I've got my five stitches for that section. So I know I'm right on track. If I had, had only gotten to here and I'd only had five, I'd go ahead and pull that section out so that I could respace them out a little bit better. Excuse me. Okay, so that means it is time to jump over to my second section. So I can pull that stitch marker out if I want to, or I can just leave it there for now to make sure I know exactly where this little section begins and just jump right over it. It's not gonna be too much in the way. If it is too much in the way, go, like I say, go ahead and pull it out. Otherwise, you can just kind of push it there to the back. And then we jump over to our next section and we do our next five. Again, just going into those sides of the stitches wherever you like. And you know, the first couple times you make a border, it's probably gonna look a little bit wonky. Um, it's, it is something I think almost every crocheter I know, including professionals, does it a little bit differently. They have their own method. They have the places in those sides of those stitches that they like to work into, may not be the ones that I like to work into. It's all fine as long as, again, you like the finished look of your piece. So I've got my third one there. I've got two more before I get to this center stitch marker. Remember, we're going for 21, so breaking it into these groups of five is really handy. But then of course we've got that 21st, so we'll have to make sure we get an extra one right there in the middle. So this is where I really like having left that first one in so I can see exactly. I've got four stitches here, so I've got to get one more. We'll just pop it right in there. And then so that we get 21, I'm gonna put one right where that center stitch marker is, or at least real darn close. It doesn't have to be right on it, but should be pretty close. Now I know, and I can always go back and count, and make sure we should have 11 stitches along the side after that corner. So one more time, we can go over here how to count your stitches a little bit. This was the last stitch of our corner, which you can tell from the front. You can see, let me pull up another hook here so it's a little easier to point. You can see here where the bottom of that stitch is going into that corner. So then we come over here and we look at the little V, the two loops, if we turn it this way, it looks like a V, right on top of that stitch. So we can count those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So we know we're right on track to have the correct stitch count as we work along that side. So then same thing, you can go ahead and push that stitch marker to the back or if you wanna keep it there, but it's just getting too much in the way, you can just pick it up and move it right into the top of that stitch we just made. Now we know that's the center, that's our, our stitch number 11. So then we can continue working right on down the side. We've got another little section for five more stitches. So do we have any other questions about working into the edge so far as I continue working down my edge? I don't see any other questions. Um, just to give you a time check, uh, we are at 4.43, just so that um, you're aware. Okay, thank you very much, I appreciate it. So- No problem. I get the idea, take your time, it's an art, work your way around. When we get to the bottom, it's going to be the same thing. If we flip it over, you can see if you look, if you worked into that underneath loop of your chain, like I talked about in Crochet 101, you should have two loops down here to work into. If you worked into a different section of the chain, you may only have one loop down here to work into. Doesn't matter, whatever is available, you work across the bottom of your project the same way that you did across the top or down the side. So just remember, we're gonna pull out real quick for the corner, is just in the very first stitch along each side, you go five single crochets right into that very first side, okay? So as you, let me pull this one aside here and pull up, thankfully, I have another swatch ready to go. Mm -hmm. There we go. So here on this one, I have worked all the way around and I've come right up to that first corner where we began, where we joined with our slip stitch. Now, again, this time I, was, I wasn't talking at the same time, so I got my five single crochets in each corner and I've worked up the side here. So this was our first corner that only had the first three. So let me pull my stitch marker out that I was using to secure that loop. Put my hook right back in that loop. And a little quick tip again, if you have to take your hook out of the loop and put it back in, when you put it back in, just remember when you pull that end of your yarn, the part that moves should be in front of your hook. So to finish up edging row one, we're going to go right back into that first stitch, that place where we made our first three single crochets, right back in the same hole and make two more. 
So there's one and there's two. Now here's where I'm going to go ahead. This one doesn't have stitch markers in it. I'm gonna put a stitch marker in the last stitch that I just made. I'm gonna go ahead and put one in the first stitch, that first single crochet that I made in this round. And you'll see here a little bit why I did that in a moment. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish off edging round one with a slip stitch. So that means I go into that first single crochet we made as if it was a new row, but it's not. This is how we're gonna finish off row one. So right where that stitch marker is there, right in the top of that first single crochet, yarn over, pull it through, and then pull that loop right on through. So just like we made our slip stitch before, but now we're using it to close up that round and join it all together. And stitch marker one to pop open there, but this is where I find these are so handy because as we work our edging round two, we don't wanna work into that slip stitch that we just made to join our rounds with. That's not going to count as a stitch for our round. So we just wanna make sure that we begin and end in those marked stitches. So that's where those can be really handy. So to begin round two, or at the second round, we're going to start with a chain three. So one, two, three, just like the chains we made at the beginning of crochet 101 to begin our washcloth. This chain three is going to count as the first double crochet for this round. So anytime, um, you begin a round with double crochets, more often than not, they're going to say chain three and it counts as your first double crochet. So this is just like the turning chain we did before with our chain one, but because these stitches we're going to be making are so tall, we need a taller ladder to get up to that height. So now we are going to work three double crochets in the same space as the slip stitch. Now that can be a little confusing. That doesn't mean work them into the slip stitch itself. It means work them into the space we work the slip stitch into. So work three double crochets right back into that first stitch. So if you remember our double crochets, we yarn over, go right into that stitch. There's our first one. And now that stitch marker is a little bit in the way. So what I can do is put it right in the top of that chain three. <coughs> Excuse me, I take a little sip of water. Remember I said that chain three is gonna count as our first double crochet. So that's gonna count as our first stitch. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's our first one. We've got two more double crochets all to work in this first stitch. Kind of like how we did all those single crochets the first time through. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we've got our first three double crochets in that first space as the slip stitch. And then what we're going to do is skip the next two uh, stitches. So we haven't skipped stitches before, but it literally just means kind of what it says. We're just going to skip right over them. So we wanna make sure to skip those next two. So we count one and two, and then we're gonna work into the stitch right after that. So we're gonna make a single crochet in that stitch. So skip two, one, two, single crochet in the next. We can just skip right on over those, like so, there we are. You can see that sort of brings that double crochet down, so we're gonna get a really nice shell on our edge there. Then we skip the next stitch. We're just gonna skip one this time, and we're gonna work five double crochets in the stitch after that. So if I hold that up a little closer here, you see we skip the next one and work five double crochets in the very next stitch. So we yarn over and just work our five double crochets all in that same stitch, just like we did before with our corners. Now we're going to be doing this across our row here. And what this is going to do is these five double crochets all worked into the same stitch are going to create what's called a scallop or a shell. And I think that's how this uh, dishcloth got its name with a scalloped edge dishcloth. So here, if we look closely, you can count our stitches. We've got one, two, three, four, and five double crochets all worked into that same stitch. So then we are going to skip the next stitch and single crochet in the stitch after that. So skip the next one, single crochet in the next. Then we skip the next one and five double crochets in the one after that. And as you can see, that's our repeat. So we put sort of like a little half shell there in our first corner. 
but along this edge here, we're going to have five shells before we get to our next corner. So you work five double crochets all into that same stitch. There we are. Then skip the next stitch and single crochet in the stitch after that. The single crochets are what help pull the sides of those edges down and give us that really lovely shape. So skip the next one, five double crochets in the next one. We're starting our third one here. And I just wanna make sure we can get all the way to the corner here before we have to go today. So I'm making my double crochets. Allison, do we have any questions I can answer as I finish up my side here? Let me take a look. So yeah, it's the same thing. Just skip one, single crochet in the next, skip one, five double crochet in the next, all the way across here until we've got five of those shells or scallops made. Different, different designers will call them different things. Um, and you know, sometimes it'll have more than five or less than five. It's a little bit, uh, it, can, it can vary. And that's part of the fun of it. They all look a little different. I actually don't see too many questions today, which, you know. Hopefully that means you're following along. <laughs> I think that's great. Um, I know that we had a comment here that they said only the first part of the edges is, only the sides are tricky, not the tops and bottoms. I would yeah. definitely agree with that. Absolutely, absolutely. And then the nice thing is because we did that first round of edging, we do have really great stitches to work into for edging round two. So really, it's just the sides on just that first round that are definitely the trickiest part of this cloth. After that, you're just working into stitches like before. So we've got our uh, five, let's see, let's go ahead back and look here. I'm gonna lay it down a little bit easier. We've got our first corner begun, and then we've got one, two, three, four, and five shells made there, each with five double crochets. So then what we're going to do, I just wanna double check my instructions to make sure I do it right too. We're gonna go ahead and skip one and make one more single crochet here along the side. You can see that has brought us right up to those five single crochets in the corner. So what we wanna do now is skip the next two, the first two of those stitches that are worked into the corner, and we're going to work eight double crochets into that next one. So skip two, find the one after that, it should be the one right in the middle of the five that you worked into the corner, and work eight double crochets into that. And that's gonna give us the great big shell that's gonna bring us around our corner. And then we can begin again. Five shells along this side, big eight double crochet shell in this corner, five shells along that side, and all the way around. And because we want to get those five shells on each side is why we needed to count out the number of stitches we worked along the edge. If you don't like the shell stitch or you don't like the scalloped edge and you prefer, the look with just this really nice, clean, sort of modern looking edge, then you don't have to worry as much about the stitch count along the side as you're working into the sides of the rows. But anytime you're going to be working a second edging like this, that's when that stitch count does become important. Uh, Ronnie had a question here. To resize the cloth larger, um, hmm. do you know what the multiple would be? Yes, um, the great thing is about this pattern if you'll remember the, um, let's see, if we come back here, we started with 23 chains. We skip that first chain, so every row has 22 stitches. That means it's just an even number. It's just two stitches, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. So chain any odd number, skip that first stitch, and then you can work on across and you'll be able to start with a single crochet and end with a double crochet. Then in terms of the rows, it's just really how far you wanna take it. Working out the stitches for the scalloped edge is a little bit trickier, um, but you can, you, know, you can just add however many more rows you want. And then you can see like here where I'm skipping, I would skip two more before I began and worked each one. If you have gone off on your own and upsized it or made it your own size, you can adjust that as needed. If you find, oh gosh, I'm just not quite getting in all my scallops here, or it ends in a weird place, try only skipping one at the beginning and one at the end. Um, so you can judge it a little bit. There's not, um, there's not rules, it's crochet. I mean, if you're following a pattern and you want it to look exactly like the written pattern, great, follow those instructions. But if you're making it up on your own, you can go ahead and put those stitches wherever you want them to be. 
let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got two more to go here for my corner. And you can see this will be a great big shell. And it's all going back into that same stitch. So that stitch is going to gap a little bit because it's had eight double crochets made into it, and that's okay. That is absolutely fine. So you can see here that is the great big shell that takes us around the edge. Then we just start the same thing we did here. Skip those first two stitches right there because those are part of our corner. And then we can single crochet, skip one shell, get our five shells across this edge, get our big eight double crochet shell in that corner. If I pull up, there it is. Got so many swatches, I had to find it. Here's our finished one again. You can see here, those little great big eight double crochet shells, five along each side, eight in the corner again. And then when we get all the way around, it's gonna be the same thing we did at the end here. We'll come down here, make our single crochet, and then we can just go ahead and work, uh, let's see, it would be four more double, double crochets. Because remember we had eight in each, cor each corner, and when we began, we had our chain three and three more. So that's the first four. So we need to come back, kind of how we did with those single crochets in the first edging round, put four more in there, and then we can just slip stitch right to that marked stitch, the top of that chain three, and break our yarn, cut it, and finish it off, just as we did before. Weave in your ends, and you'll have a finished fish clock. Okay, so I think that covered just about everything. <laughs> it was a little quick there. Um, so hopefully, like I said, I know some of that stuff I had to go over pretty quickly, um, but a lot of it's the same stitches over and over again. So hopefully if you go back and watch the recorded videos, um, you can pause them, you know, go back and rewind and fast forward to the parts that are easy. Uh, you'll be able to make your own dish cloth. Awesome. Um, I did see one question in here about if we're going to be having any more beginner classes and I just recommend just keep checking back to um, michaels.com slash online classes. I know that um, this crochet 101 class and 102 class with Tamara has been incredibly successful and we ha we've had such a good time. So um, we definitely just continue to check back for more classes. Um, if anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to, to pop them in the chat here. But otherwise, I think we're, we've been doing great. Um, just a reminder that this class will be listed uh, by Tuesday at the latest. So if you go to michaels.com slash classes, that's where you'll be able to find today's recording. Mm -hmm. And I've got lots of beginner patterns too. I know there's lots on your inspirations. I've got many on mooglyblog.com and you can always reach out to me there um, if you have questions that I can help you with as well. So I'd be happy to help anybody. I love spread spreading the joy of crochet and um, hopefully this will inspire you to keep going. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tamara. And thank, thank you. you everybody so much for attending another community classroom today with us. Yes, and thank you to Michaels for having us. It's been real, a lot of fun. And just as a last minute reminder to everybody, it is Moogly Blog. <laughs> where you can yeah. find Tamra. So, moogleyblog.com. All, right. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye.